Hello, and welcome to Notes and Nine. I'm David Leedy. Episode 46, Building XPages Forms with Extension Library. If you build it, they will fill in fields. Okay, um, so I don't have a lot of slides here. It's, it's all going to be demo today. Um, but I want to briefly talk about the extension library itself. And the extension library pretty much comes in two flavors these days. Um, there's Upgrade Pack 1, and then there's the extension library proper, I, I guess I would call it. The Upgrade Pack 1 is available from IBM, uh, I, I believe through Passport Advantage and however you, you get your normal software. And it's it's officially supported by IBM. You have a problem, you call in the support, they will tell you what's going on with the problem, I guess. Um, it, it contains many, but not all the components of the extension library. And the big stuff that it's missing right now, uh, that I'm at least aware of, um, is the JDBC stuff, you know, the, the the relational database access controls and stuff like that. Now, if you do have a problem with it, I'm not quite sure what they're going to do for you because I could be wrong on this, but I don't believe they're going to offer fix packs for it until the next upgrade pack. And again, I could totally be wrong on that, but that's what I thought I heard. So if, if you have to have officially supported stuff by IBM, then I guess your only chance is to use the upgrade pack. But again, it's not everything in the up, in the extension library is finished or that they're happy with. So that's you know, so it's a subset. So some pieces are missing. If you want everything, then there's the extension library itself. Now the extension library is supported by OpenNTF, and what I mean by that is by the people involved in building XPages itself. Um, they they you can post your bugs and, and your feature enhancements and they look at it and they, they might turn out a new version every couple weeks or maybe sometimes every couple days or so so there's a frequent release schedule so I, I guess from where I sit you know you might actually get better support using the extension library rather than the update pack because of the frequency of releases um, so that's between obviously you and your management and your your environment but just remember if you want the fully supported version from IBM you're not gonna get everything um, now there's obviously there's an up upgrade pack 2 coming and whatever that includes that's gonna include or so but you have to make the choice I was at this boff at Lotusphere and there seemed to be a, a lot of discussion between between you know the officially supported one and then the extension library and I think Martin Donnelly said it where last year everyone was begging for something to be officially supported now they have this officially supported upgrade pack but people are complaining that it doesn't include everything like the the JDBC relational database stuff so so right now it's one or the other um, I, I guess maybe technically you could try to marry them on your server but I, I don't see the point in you know having the upgrade pack on for support and then trying to get the JDBC components you know in there on the side on top of it because that's technically unsupported so again you gotta make a choice for you I know at my company we, we're just using extension library because uh, that's what we want to use and we're more comfortable with that um, but there you go so okay today what I want to talk about is how to kind of build a form field in X pages and we're gonna look at the the application layout control briefly because I've not dived into it too far yet and we're gonna look at these new things called a, like a form row and a form table and a form layout column and stuff like that and 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 the goal of the show is just to give you you know a little taste of how these things may work uh, in in your X pages development and with that here's the demo okay um, so what I want to do is just kind of look at the extension library a little bit with that that app uh, layout control and and placing fields in a form. Uh, this is not something I'm really an expert at yet, um, so we'll see how it goes. We're going to start off by creating a custom control, and we'll call this CC layout. And on here, we're going to put on a oops, nope, extension library. And we're going to put an application layout control, and we're going to talk about this for a minute. You can this isn't really a wizard as much as it is like a more of a, just a one-shot configuration screen. You can kind of preset things that you want or don't want. So I'm just going to say OK here. So now this is a, this is actually pretty good um, graphically that it shows what what it kind of looks like. 
Now if we come, I'm going to make this a little bigger here. So if we come up to application layout, what you're going to see is these drop targets. Okay. Now you might look at this green dot and say, I, I can drop things on here. And, and that's great, but the problem with that at the moment is if we put this on an X page, we'll call this home, and we drag this on there, we can't drop it here. So the green dots don't on the custom control don't transfer over to the to the actual X page. I'm going to save that. So let's go back to the custom control. And what we can do at this point is we could drop editable areas on here, or very simply is we can just check this, and it's going to add the facets. And uh, the facet is, I guess it's called a callback. I'm, I'm not totally sure I can explain it um, quite yet, but it's important. So now we've got a facet left, and we've got a facet middle. And if we save this again and come back to our home, now we have drop targets here. So what do you think you might drop in the left? Well, we might drop some kind of navigation menu. So let's come down to uh, Custom Controls. Oops. And let's make a nav. And I'm not going to get too fancy with the navigator yet because, quite honestly, I haven't figured it out yet. Um, so it's just going to be pretty basic for the, the demo. What I really want to do is talk about this form stuff. Okay, so here's a navigator. Okay, so it kind of looks neat. Um, but you know, you can't really do anything graphically. So this is all going to be in the properties panel or in the source. So we're going to just start in the properties panel for the most part and go to all properties. And if we come down and if we click on the nav, so there's this thing called tree nodes and I'm still kind of trying to figure that out, but you can add these different types of nodes and, and, and they do something. And what what is I think that the basic rule of thumb at the moment is a container node is kind of like a div and a tree node allows for hierarchy like menus and stuff like that and a basic leaf node is like a link okay and the other ones you know, I haven't gotten to yet so we're gonna look at this basic leaf node and let's just put a URL in here yahoo.com Okay, and we can give it a label, Yahoo. And we're going to, oops. Okay, and then, of course, you can do other things with it, like rendered and stuff like that. So now if we save this and go back to our X page, oh, we get nothing. And why? Because I didn't put the label on, or I didn't put the navigator on the layout control. Okay, so if we come down to the layout, oh, nope, nope, not the layout control, on the, on the home. So we're going to go to the home page, and right here, drop it on. And, and by putting the navigator on each page you make, allows you to change it up. So rather than having in the layout control, so if you want to have different menu options for different pages, like we've got this this tab bar, you know, you might want to change, you know, the, the left hand side. So if we come down to the left hand side and say navigator and drop that in there, and now we view that, we should have Yahoo. It doesn't look great yet, but it does work. Okay, and we're starting to see the our frame, you know, our little layout, you know, taking place. So let's go back to our layout and in our all properties. You know, and, and we can add different things here. What what I want to do is uh, title bar and my application, and we're gonna save that and come back here and preview it. So now we've got my application up here. So we got the beginning of you know our little One UI 2.1 framework and then the beginning of a, of a navigator. Not all that interesting yet, but I, that's not really the, the point of the show. What, what I want to talk about is is like when I did Blueprint episodes before uh, in Notes 9 and uh, back a uh, long time ago actually, what the way I would do the, the layout is I would end up 
making a content, a custom control for each content page. And then I'd make an X page, and then I'd drag my layout onto it, and then I'd drag my custom control, which was the actual content, into, you know, the, 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 the layout page. Um, I guess I should show that, but you can go back to some old episodes of Note to 9 for Blueprint to see that. And while that worked, and, and, and it was, was kind of interesting, you know, it's kind of dumb that you're using custom controls that aren't reusable, you know, because all your content was kind of in custom controls, and I've said that before, you're, you're working more with custom controls now. Um, but in this world of, of, of doing this way, if we go to our home page, there's this facet in here. So what we can do is we can drop, drag a panel in here, and now we're going to go to the source for this, and, and we can now use this space to insert our content. And if we look at this, so here we go. So now we, we've got our content. So what this does, which is, again, this is kind of new to me, and this is a little different than what I've been saying on, on the, the, the screencast for a little while, is it gets us back to actually having our content on the X page itself, because now you have this, this area to work with. And then you can kind of leave your custom controls for purely reusable things, like documents or or views or whatever, and, and you can still drop custom controls in here, of course, but you don't have to use a custom control for every little thing, um, because what you can do is you're just working in this this facet area uh, of the facet middle. Okay, so that is a uh, long drawn out way to show to get to what I actually wanted to show today, and that is kind of like laying out your form. So. You don't want to have static text on your form all the time. Sometimes you want to have fields and you want them to look nice. So the extension library gives us some new tools. And one of them is called Form Table. If we drag that on there, we're going to see a form title and form description for options. So we're going to do my fields description. And if we look at this in the browser, Okay, so now we've got a little area to kind of start dropping fields on. And we'll close that. If we look at this in Designer, you can see there's even you can get a little fancy with headers and footers, and and this is kind of like the main area where we're gonna we're gonna live in here. Okay, and how do you do this? Well, you start off with a, a form row, form layout row. We're gonna drag that in there. And oops. And let's look at this first in, in um, the graphical designer here. So you've got this help, label, and label again, which really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Here's what I think I know so far. Well, I don't know what this guy here in the middle does at all. This is where you're, you're going to actually drop your control to, and this is the actual label you're going to work with. So my field. Okay, this help here, I don't know what it does either. Uh, I believe it doesn't even work, um, which I believe is actually going to be in the, the upcoming book. It's going to say probably it doesn't work avoided. So hopefully that will be fleshed out and, and better documented at some point. So all I really know as I record this show is basically how to work with this guy and this guy over here. And if we come back to source and come in here and we're going to go to a core control and just drop an edit box in. Okay, we look here, and then it basically hit that. Oh, didn't. oh I missed. That's what that's what happened. As I missed, I'm going to drop it in between the form row here. Okay, so it basically hit that that third or that third facet, and that's where we want it to be. Now, if we look at that on the screen on the web page, we've got a field. Now it's kind of cool some of the things you can do with it and some of the, the control you get where we can come to this late to this form row and say the label position is is above. Oops. That's what I want. And then moved it all above. So that's kind of nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to 
copy this to make another one. I shall make four, three total, or for four total. And look at this, and now we've got four fields on here. All nice laid out, all or above. And we'll get to talk more about that in a minute. Now if we come out here, you know, it's it might be better to put these in columns. So we've got this extension library control called form layout column. I'm going to drag it right over here. And even though I dragged it there, it put it where I didn't want it to be. So I, I don't quite get that, but it, it's quite annoying, actually. So I'm going to make two columns. I'm going to expand these, so hopefully I won't get confused. And we're going to take two form rows right here, Control-X. I'm going to put it inside the first column. Okay, then we're going to take the other two and put it inside this column. And and we'll do shift control shift F, which kind of cleans up your XML. And let's look and see what it looks like. Okay, so now we're playing with columns. You know, so now maybe we want these labels to be above, maybe we want to go back to the left. So let's let's just look at that for a minute. We have all these label positions set to above, okay? But there's also one called inherit. And if we change all these, now I haven't actually tried this yet, so I'm, I'm probably going to screw myself up here. But if we change all these to inherit and look at it, now they're on the left. Okay, so if inherit is set, it's going to inherit from what? Well, I'm going to guess it's going to be this form table. If we look at all properties of the form table, there's label position right here, which has basically above and left. So if we set that to label position above for the form table and come back here, okay, now they're all changed because they're all set to inherit. I don't know why that's still there. So that's kind of cool. So that that's that has the potential to really start saving time. Also up here are things um, called label width. So you can set the label width to um, for all the labels within your form table. Now, of course, what you can do. Oops. If I don't screw up here. Is you can also add a second form table. If you wanted to almost make, you know, the equivalent of, of a field set, basically. So if we look here and uh, how about like an address block. And then you can do, of course, more layout rows. And you can drop your edit box in between here. And on this row, you can set the field. And then if we look at this, okay, now this is out of alignment because this is set for two columns and, and this is not. So those are things you're going to have to work with through with CSS and uh, that's kind of beyond the scope of this show right now. But this is how you kind of can get started with these uh, new controls in the extension library, form table, form layout row, and form layout column. And that's the demo. Um, I hope that was helpful at least. And if you have any questions, here's my contact information. And I thank you for your time.